Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and it looks like Paul Throt is at it again. Now, you know, I used to like Paul stuff because even though I knew he was a Windows fanboy, he still was pretty objective. But there's two articles that he's written here lately that is just complete and utter ass talk. Um, that's all he's doing is talking out his ass, and now Paul Throt is making excuses about it, and he's crying like a little baby. Here, let me play the world's smallest violin for you. You see what I'm saying? Fuck you, Paul. Let's get into your first one I'm going to go over, which is your most recent. Just say no. Is it time to say goodbye to Apple? Now, the next one we're going to go over is his article about iTunes in general. This is just about saying no to Apple. Is it time to say goodbye? And it's funny how he brings this up at the peak of Apple's pinnacle here. I mean, Apple is more popular than ever. They're selling more devices than ever. They're selling more music and movies than ever. They're more popular. They're selling more Macs than ever. And just now he decides to write a blog post about, is it time to say goodbye to Apple? You know what I think? I think Apple's starting to run away with the tech market, and you're freaking out, so you're trying to do whatever you can do to put a stop to it. So you're going to write these blogs about FUD, and you're going to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt about Apple. So let's get into this, and let's, I'm going to read this so we can uh, discuss it. He begins, I've received numerous emails about my iTunes 10 review, um, which is negative, and in my opinion is deservedly so. Fortunately, most of the feedback I received indicates that readers are fed up with iTunes as well. Well, uh, and amusingly, a few of the emails I got noted that it was just as bad on the Mac, tossing cold water on my fanciful conspiracy theory. So anybody out there who says iTunes is bad on the Mac, show me. I challenge you. I will, I will own you. iTunes hardly ever crashes. It always fires up within two or three bounces on the dock. Um, it, it never freezes. I have no idea exactly what you're talking about, and I'm calling you, Paul Therott, completely full of shit, and I'm calling the readers that wrote you and said iTunes is just as much a problem on the Mac as it is Windows is completely full of shit. I challenge anybody to make a video showing me what about iTunes is so horrendous. Okay? So please, make a video. If you're out there, if any of you who wrote Paul Therott and said when iTunes is just as hideous on the Mac as it is the, the uh, Windows PCs, please make a video and show me what's so hideous. Because I'm sick and tired of all you blowhards whistling out your asshole about how iTunes sucks. But you never have any suggestions or solutions, alternatives. And you really never even tell us what's bad about it besides, oh, I don't like this color or I don't like how they changed this icon. Seriously, where, I want to see some real documented problems. I'm not saying iTunes never crashes, but I'm telling you iTunes is one of the least crashing apps that I have on my whole Mac. And if it sucks on the Windows, maybe it's Windows' fault. Here you are throwing out this big fucking conspiracy theory. Yeah, Apple is secretly contriving to make iTunes suck on Windows PCs. So that when they, code, when they coded iTunes, secretly they made it terrible. So it would be slow and clunky and crash a lot. That's what your conspiracy theory is. That, to you, makes more sense than maybe just Windows being a shitty fucking platform. Of course it does. And why does that weird conspiracy theory make more sense to you, Paul? Because you're a fucking fanboy. That's why. So, um, it says, so it goes on to say, so iTunes is junk. Please prove to me that iTunes is junk. I'm not, I'm not, se I'm not selling for just you saying iTunes is junk. How is iTunes junk? Because you specifically don't like the colors they choose? Or you specifically don't like... What, what, what about iTunes is junk? Because I know it's stable. Okay, I know it, it, it's, it's, it's not slow. Anytime I click a song, it starts playing. Anytime I click a movie, it starts playing. I don't know what anybody is talking about. So I'm calling you liars out on that, okay? Show me what you're talking about. This is a question I've pondered for years, he goes on to say. But with iTunes 10 throwing down the stink, so... See, he... He just keeps constantly saying, iTunes sucks, iTunes sucks, iTunes sucks. And when we go over the, the other article about some of his specific reasons why iTunes sucks, we'll get, in, we'll get into that more. But 
I love how he just kind of just says it like it's fact. And the, what I find is funny is how you all talked about me for years and years and years. And now that Apple's finally coming back and kicking Microsoft's ass, you all are starting to sound just like we did back in the day. Ain't it funny? Ain't it funny how things in history repeats itself and things flip-flop? Let's see. It, so he goes on to say, um, I'm actually starting to think the time has come for an anti-iTunes movement. The problem is there's no single obvious solution. Oh, there we go, Paul. Let's advocate an anti-iTunes movement, but let's not have any solutions to, to recommend people. Let's just, let's just blackball iTunes and not give the people any solutions, alternative solutions. That right there is proof of your biased fucking hatred. Okay, don't tell me you... Oh, I don't have no problem with Apple. In fact, I use Apple stuff. Bullshit. <laughs> tell that shit to somebody else. Okay. There are various third-party tools that let you sync some content with some iPods via Windows Media Player. The one I sort of recommend in the past is Media 4X Play 3. God damn, what a name. That sounds like something I'd love to use, Paul. Media 4X Play 3. Media 4 X Play 3. Wonderful name. But it doesn't work with most desirable modern eye devices. Well then, throw that out the fucking window because there's 120 million of them out there. How dare you even suggest such a stupid thing then. Um, a reader recommends a weird little tool called MG Tech Dop, Dop ISP or Dops, Dopisp. But it only syncs music. So, that's not a recommendation at all. That's not an alternative at all. You know? What the fuck are you talking about? You, you, I, I, I thought you was going to give us some, some good solutions if you're going to advocate an anti-iTunes movement. You know? Is this all you can do for us? Quit using the best piece of fucking software on the planet for this kind of thing? In exchange for what? These things? Oh, yeah, iTunes is so fucking bad. The UI is so bad. It's so slow. It's so terrible. Fuck you, Paul. And compared to what? You can't even give us one single alternative that does what iTunes does. So how can you say it even fucking sucks when there's nothing out there to even fucking compare it to, you goddamn mook? Okay, no offense, but you just blatantly stating iTunes sucks makes no sense because there's nothing to compare it against. Sucks next to what, Paul? Show me something that don't suck. Okay? There, as you, you say it yourself, there is no viable alternative. So to say iTunes sucks is just ass-speak because there's nothing else out there that's any better. So obviously iTunes is the best, okay? But you want to say it sucks. Well, show me something that's better. Then you can say it sucks. But until you can show me something that's better, I don't see how you can say it sucks, because the Zune Marketplace ain't half, ain't half the music store that iTunes is, and you know it. Let's go on. Even if they did, it's unlikely that you'd be able to ignore iTunes if you're still using an iPhone or an iPod Touch and or an iPad. There's just too much content on iTunes, including music, movies, TVs, apps, podcasts, audiobooks, iTunes U and video recordings. There's no point in using an Apple device if you're not going to take advantage of the store. I agree with you there. And while it's possible to access some of that content via the devices, you can't ignore iTunes on the PC Mac completely. You know, I'm going to say it again. Now you know how we felt about Windows all those fucking years. Put that in your pipe and smoke it because I don't give a fuck how bad it tastes. We dealt with it for a fucking decades. Time for you to deal with it. Us Mac users preaching about Windows software so fucking terrible, it's so fucking clunky, it's so fucking ugly, but we gotta use it because we everybody uses them at work and at school. So how does it feel? How does it feel, motherfuckers, when the shoe's on the other foot, huh? Huh? Is it comfortable? Because I can tell you from experience, it's not. So, an obvious alternative solution emerges. Maybe it's time to consider ignoring Apple products altogether. <gasps> there it is. Maybe it's time to consider ignoring Apple products altogether. So why didn't you just really turn this blog post into something what it really is? A shield against Apple products. Don't buy Apple products. They're fucking destroying. They're destroying 
my favorite company, Microsoft. So please, let's just put a ban on all Apple products. Why? Why is it I'm telling you to put a ban on all Apple products? Because of iTunes. Fuck your iPad. Fuck your Apple TV. Fuck your iPod. Fuck your iPhone. Fuck all that nice equipment. Because I don't like iTunes. Typical Windows shill you are, Paul Throt. Typical Windows shill. Shrill, I should say. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, maybe it's time to consider ignoring Apple products altogether. This is a step I think many people aren't particularly interested in. You don't say. Um, though I'm curious to hear what you all think, he says. Looking past Apple's semi-ubiquitous i-ecosystem, there's only one emerging platform that makes any sense at all, and it's from Microsoft. Boy, um, is that a surprise? There's only one serious alternative, and that's from Microsoft. Let's forget the fact that Google has Android, and Google's also in the works to make an, a Google Music Store that people are going to be able to access from all their Android devices just like you can the iTunes store from the iPhone but the most viable alternative is from fucking Microsoft and you talk about our closed down iPhone let's talk about your closed down iPhone I'm sorry Windows phone no cut and paste no flash so I'm tired of hearing you Microsoft apologists aka Paul Throt well Apple did the same thing, and people give Apple a hard time, but, 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 but this is different. This is different. Blah, blah, blah. Give me a fucking break. Give me a fucking break. What's happened is, you've got owned, you've put your fucking foot in your mouth, and now you're trying to make excuses so it doesn't look like you have your foot in your mouth. Okay, let's go on. Let's go, let's get me off me ranting here. Let's go on with this article. I've already explained why I think the Zoom stuff falls short of what Apple offers. Well, at least he admits it. But if you haven't read it yet, or you need a refresher, please do check out the Zoom HD review, Part 5, The Big Picture. And, of course, it's a link to another one of his blogs. It was written almost a year ago, before Windows Phone was announced, and while some things have changed, most of it's still very relevant. With this in mind, let's examine what's available on the Microsoft side to replace what Apple offers iTunes versus Zune. Even he says that's not really an alternative. It says, answer to iTunes is the Zune PC software, and it's both excellent and superior to the Apple offering, he says. In fact, I recommend checking out Zune if you never intend to use a Zune or Windows Phone portable device. If you ever intend, or never, is it never? Even if you never intend to use a Zune or Windows Phone portable device, it's just a neat way to organize and manage your media. So, uh, I tend to disagree with that. I hate the Zoom UI. I fucking hate it. I hate how it scrolls over different screens. I hate it. I think the iTunes UI is perfect for what I do. It lets me navigate the quickest and, and the most accurate, too. Then he says, iTunes Store versus the Zoom Marketplace. This is what he says. There's no comparison, really. Microsoft's alternative... Microsoft's alternative to the iTunes Store is the Zune Marketplace. It's good compared to the iTunes Store, but the iTunes Store is excellent. Okay, so it goes on to say, while it doesn't offer everything available on the iTunes Store, it does have music, TV shows, movies, and podcasts. Only just the, the selection isn't quite there yet. So that's what you suggest users do? Go to a lesser stocked store so they can get out of using... A certain type of software they don't like. I'm sorry. I, I just, I just, I can't understand where you're going with this, Paul. And he goes on to say iPhone versus Windows Phone. He says he feels the Microsoft's new Windows Phone platform is superior to the iPhone from a usability perspective, even though it don't have copy and paste and stuff like that, or any, you know, 600 or 250,000 apps. But so, uh, of course, it's going to be more user friendly, right? Of course, it is. But of course, Apple's offering is backed by more more volume of online sto of an online store and is in and its incredible apps and games availability. There are big advantages for Apple, but as Google did with Android, I feel that Windows Phone will at least be competitive. It's not going to do anything but hold the line. Okay, it's going to be it's going to sell, but it's not going to sell extremely well. Okay, iPod Touch versus the Zoom. Microsoft's year-old Zune is the only alternative to the software giant that uh, that the software giant offers to any of Apple's iPods. And as a music player, it's the superior option. 
but he fails to leave out in his opinion because there are millions and millions of people out there that disagree with him. For some reason, he's automatically assuming that people don't use the Zoom phone because they haven't tried it. And I guarantee you, if they try it, they're still not going to want to use it because most, a lot of people feel the way I do. They don't like that scroll over UI. Some people like it, but some people don't, and I don't. I'm one of the ones that don't. The video playback experience is decent on the Zoom, but the future is unclear. The future is unclear. Wonderful! Um, and if Microsoft would offer Zoom HD 2 that was based on Windows Phone, I'd be more comfortable with this option. So not only in order to get away from Apple products, not only are you suggesting us go to Microsoft products, but you're suggesting us to go to Microsoft products that ain't even been developed yet. Good idea. Apple TV versus the Xbox 360. Come on, why are you even comparing these things? They're totally, totally different deals. I can stream... You can play games on your Xbox 360. I can't play games on my Apple TV. But I can stream Netflix across my Apple TV for free. With Xbox, you got to have a $60 a year Xbox Gold membership or whatever it is. So, you know, I don't know why the Apple TV and Xbox 360 are even in the same category together. Because that makes no sense to me. Ping versus Zoom Social. I mentioned this just for completion's sake. The social networks are both lacking in their own ways, but I would point out that Microsoft already offers better music discovery functionality overall. And um, I don't know what you all want out of music discovery. Uh, iTunes has 650 million songs. If you used to walk into a physical music store that housed 650 million songs, how would you go about organizing that and helping people discover music better? I mean, there's absolutely hardly nothing you can do with that amount of music. You can give people featured artists, you can give people a search bar, you can give people categories. But seriously, with 650 million tunes, how do you expect Apple to help you discover music better within the UI? They've added ping, which will help you discover music through following your favorite artists and friends. We'll get into ping in a different video. but. That also adds music discoverability, okay? So what else would people like them to do? We're all ears, people. All ears. But there's really not much you can do. The social network is probably the best solution to, to the music discovery problem. And um, I really don't see anything else that they can do, I mean, besides what they're doing. I think ping is wonderful. I think its future potential is enormous. And I'm going to tell everybody I told you so in two years when it's finally where I know it's headed. Okay? Nobody ever trusts Apple, it seems like. After all their success over the past ten years, people still want to come out and say, ah, they, it's a flop. You know, trust Apple. Give them a year or two. Everything always starts out this way. Remember how iTunes started out with just like 200,000 songs on it and like two studios? Give it time. Okay? I think the negativity really is spurned from a lot of fear in what Apple's doing. That's what I think. It says, I've been meaning to kickstart a new version of my digital media core series in which I intend to investigate some best practices type advice around choosing various digital media solutions such as audio and video codecs, CD and DVD ripping, uh, content management, and so on. Maybe this can be recast at least somewhat around finding solutions that minimize our exposure to Apple and its lousy PC software. So we can rephrase that. For many years I've read on Mac blogs, maybe this can be a recast, or at least somewhat around finding solutions that minimize our exposure to Microsoft and its lousy Mac software. Okay? So give me a fucking break. Your complaints are falling on deaf ears ears because we complained and cried for years just like you're doing now and you all kicked us to the fucking curb so you expect me to fucking care about your gripes I trust Steve Jobs and if iTunes is the way Steve Jobs wants it then fucking deal with it or go somewhere fucking else it's that simple there's no way the iPod would have the market share it would have without the Windows market there's no doubt. But to me, that shows me that the Windows consumer is smarter than I originally thought. Okay? Because people are not buying iPods because they come installed in every car. People are not buying iPods because they're already installed in people's jackets when they buy jackets or houses when they buy houses. 
they're buying iPods because they choose to. They're buying iPhones because they choose to, and they're using iTunes because they choose to. With Windows, we had no fucking choice. So get off your fucking high horse and deal with it, because we had to. It's time for the Windows world to start dealing with it a little bit, don't you think? So anyway, he says, let me know what you think. I'll be reviewing Apple's other fall products, blah, 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 blah. And yes, this is what I'm doing. I'm letting you know what I think. And I think you're full of complete cow shit. That's what I think. Stay tuned for my next video, roasting him on his iTunes article, because, oh boy, that's going to be a good one. I'll see you then, guys. OS 10.